The SpaceX Starship is looking to change the face of spaceflight forever. Elon Musk has been launching a number of prototypes at a high frequency. But what is inside this vehicle of the future? And how exactly will a group of space travelers live inside the Starship for months at a time while on their journey to Mars and beyond? Do watch this video till the end and don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so yet. The SpaceX Starship is currently under construction in the Boca Chica facility in Texas. It's designed to replace existing rockets like the Falcon 9 while also being at the forefront of ambitious missions such as building a city on Mars. This SpaceX vehicle is going to be vital in pioneering a new era in spaceflight. The plan is that the Starship will be launched with a reusable rocket booster that will detach itself in the atmosphere. The journey to Mars in this rocket is expected to last around 7 months. The rocket is priced at $8 billion and each launch is about $2 million. The interior of the Starship will feature multiple levels for passengers, a storage area, a crew deck, and another dedicated space for activities. Elon Musk said in an interview that he had watched the movie The Dictator. In this movie, the general of a fictitious nation ordered his engineering team to make a rocket more pointy so his enemies could fear him. Musk said that this was the same thing he said in the making of Starship. It had to be pointier. When Musk was asked if the pointy design made it more aerodynamic, he confessed that it was actually probably much worse. But since everyone thought that having a pointy rocket would be funny, he opted for it. The Starship is not only pointy, but it also stands very high, with a height of 164 feet. Another obvious feature is that it is notably shiny. This shininess is because the Starship is made out of stainless steel. Stainless steel is being used in the Starship for a number of reasons. Stainless steel provides a cheaper and faster option, carbon fiber which is more conventional, and also used in building rockets, well, it's a lot more expensive than stainless steel. It costs $135 per kilo, and after that, about a third of carbon fiber needs to be scrapped when wastage is taken into account and the material is cut into the preferred size needed for construction. In actual fact, the carbon fiber is $200 per kilogram, compared to just $3 for stainless steel. In addition, stainless steel has a high melting point of about 1500 degrees Fahrenheit, whereas carbon fiber can only work at a temperature of around 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Stainless steel can handle such temperatures because of its shiny, mirror-like thermal reflectivity. The choice of fuel for the Starship is cold liquid oxygen and methane. Stainless steel has the added advantage of not getting brittle at ultra-low temperatures. To make things better, Musk is looking for better grades of stainless steel to work with for the Starship. The alloy currently used is 301 stainless steel, which has been more commonly used for space travel. The alternative being considered was the 304L, which has a higher toughness at cryo temperatures. The 301 alloy is made of nickel, chromium, and iron, and is very resistant to corrosion, while the 304L has the same makeup with a higher chromium content. It is also less likely to corrode, and would also be able to bear more weight at higher temperatures. Let's take a look at the nose cone, which houses the payload compartment. It is built to hold common areas, storage space, and a shelter where people could hide out from potentially cancer-causing storms in a lion chamber. There is also a spherical object in the nose cone known as the header tank. Up in this payload compartment, a Tesla battery pack which has been taken from the design of the Tesla production of Model 3 is also there. What is this battery pack for? The Starship is designed to be reusable, and because of its heavy nature, it cannot land vertically like other rockets. The engineers have built it such that it enters the Earth's atmosphere horizontally. It will do this with flaps at the top part of the rocket. The battery pack and engines at the top would then be used to operate the actuators of the flaps. The inside volume of the Starship is large enough to accommodate 100 people. With the plans already put in place by the Starship, this stage is set for multi-planetary life. There are two major configurations of the Starship. The first one's for transporting cargo that is more than 100 tons to the moon. The second one is for passengers and has the capacity for 100 people. From the design, there will be enough space in the cabin of the Starship for comfort. The pressurized cabin space is built to measure about 1,000 cubic meters. This volume is bigger than that of an Airbus A380, which can carry 400 to 600 people at a go. In a presentation in 2019, Musk stated that the cabin will be able to comfortably hold between two and three people, and this should be enough due to the zero gravity environment in the ship. When walking across the access arm from the launch tower, you get to the crew deck and viewing gallery. In this deck, there are 20 seats surrounding the room in a circular fashion, which is reserved for the launch team and science officers. These seats look like those in the Dragon 9 spacecraft. The seats fold into the floor when not in use, and the room becomes a viewing gallery. 
On the walls of the deck, a massive panoramic window exists, which reveals an expansive space. In the hatch on the next level, below the deck, there is a multi-purpose activity area. This is expected to be a place where all those on board are able to cool off and not be bored. The room's got large windows which are stronger than steel. People on board the ship do not need to have any fears about floating in space in the case where the ball hits the windows. On one side of this activity room, there are retractable seats that fold neatly into the wall, just like those found in a high school gymnasium. These seats are very comfortable with straps to keep passengers in place. One idea being worked on is holding zero gravity concertos on the ship. This feature could be used for the first time and it could be when Yusaku Maezawa, the Japanese billionaire, uses the ship. He's expected to fly around the moon with six to eight artists on the spaceship in 2023. Going to the next downward level opens up the first class cabins. The cabins are stacked two levels high in groups of four. There are five groups in total and this means that 20 passengers would fit comfortably in the cabins. They are designed somewhat like the capsules in a Japanese hotel, but are much more expensive. Each first class cabin costs $1 million. Each room has its own tiny window, which means that you can count the stars as you go to sleep. The next level below the first class cabin leads to the mess hall. This is where the passengers will be able to eat in zero gravity. The utensils and trays are all connected to the tables via magnets, so they do not float around. The meals will be in the form of thermostabilized food, such as cans of tuna already heat processed to destroy any form of deleterious microorganisms and enzymes. It is also possible to feed on intermediate moisture foods such as dry fruits in preparation for their life on Mars. Other foods available in the shop include insects, artificial eggs, and algae. These foods are expected to be the norm in SpaceX colonies on Mars. In the next level down, there is the bathrooms, showers, and exercise rooms. The elliptical bikes stationed in the exercise room are mounted on the wall so that pedaling is easy in zero gravity. The bathrooms also have ankle restraints to keep people in place. The Starship also has vacuum toilets, which come with urine collection hoses and waste lockers. In the next level, there is the passenger area with enough room for people to sleep and then a storage area for moving Mars rover vehicles onto Mars. When we move further down the rocket, there is a liquid oxygen tank and the liquid methane tank. This fuel mixture is unconventional when compared to the other traditional fuels used in rockets. This fuel was chosen due to some reasons. In terms of balance, it is less dense and has more weight unlike when using hydrogen. Another cool thing about the food, well, it's that when it burns clean, and this is helpful as the engines are expected to be reused a number of times. Also thanks to the discovery of ice on Mars, future missions should be able to employ a chemical method called the Sabatia process to make more meth-ox fuel right there on Mars for rockets to return to Earth. The two giant tanks combined can carry up to 1,200 tons of fuel. The two tanks are separated by a nearly hemispherical bulkhead, called the Common Dome. The bulkhead itself is another brilliant SpaceX innovation. Normally, both fuel tanks are separated by two hemispherical domes, having so much space wasted in the gaps left between them. Now, at the sphere in the nose cone lies one of the two header tanks of the ship. The other tank sits in the Common Dome down the ship. The nose cone header tank carries a separate supply of oxygen, while the other contains its own stash of liquid methane. These two reserves are only activated during the last stage of landing. This is only when the fuel supplies in the big tanks are used up. During landing, the engines can work with fresh, high-pressure meth-ox fuel. The pressure of the fuel during landing is very crucial as Elon Musk pointed to inadequate tank pressures during landing as the cause of the crash of the SN8 prototype in December of last year. This method of storing meth ox fuel also protects the necessary landing fuel reserves from what is called a burn-off. This will be a greater challenge to overcome in longer missions that will involve more solar radiation. The compact size of the reserves also saves them from what mechanical engineers call slushing. The fuel reserve in the nose cone is also regarded as a suitable counterweight. The Raptor engines are the pride of SpaceX. There are currently only three Raptor engines made used for operations at sea level. The latter versions of the Starship will most likely hold six Raptors, with the other three Raptors optimized for vacuum conditions. The Vacuum Raptor will be designed to have a larger nozzle diameter of 2.8 meters, compared to the 1.3 meters of the current Raptor engines already produced. The Starship SN10 is loaded with design refinements that are expected to make it land safely during its test flight, which will move the human race a step closer to Elon Musk's dream of a future beyond orbit. 
while you're still here, go ahead and click on one of these videos on your screen. See you there.